and the 99 has turned over Brad Keselowski. And we have a caution. My goodness. I don't know if I'm okay. Keselowski was on track for a sixth place finish. Boy, and we're told there was contact between Edwards and Keselowski. And have we seen that somewhere once before? Talladega last year and early in this race at lap 41. A little crossover move here by Carl. Clean here, clean here. Just slight contact. Oh, Look at that gosh. thing go. That looks so much like Edwards' turnover at, at Talladega, Talladega off the bumper of Keselowski. It really did, and, and I'm I, I'm so wondering and hoping that when they put the spoiler back on these cars, they'll quit turning over like this. Keselowski's put the window net down. The roof flaps deployed, but it did not sit that car back down. I'm like you, Daryl. I'm going to be so glad to see that rear spoiler back on these cars. I think that's a, it's got to be something to that. That car took a hard hit in the left A pillar, the windshield post right in front of the driver. You see, you just see how that wing sticks out so far out the back of the car, behind the car. It almost looks if it'll create downforce with the car going forward, it's got to create a pocket of air behind it when it gets around backwards. Guys, you saw it right there. Those white gloves, they made a turn to the right. Brad Kozlowski has climbed out of his Penske Dodge. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, you know, first off, Penske Racing had some phenomenal cars today. Uh, really proud of the 12 team. Uh, everybody on the uh, Mopar 12 Dodge Charger, a uh, lot to be proud of back home in the shop. Uh, I think Kurt's got a real good strong shot at winning it, so I'm really pulling for him. Hopefully we'll get it done for Penske today, but uh, just a wild ride that was uncalled for. Brad, check this out, too. I know Carl a little earlier, he had some words. He said maybe it wasn't his fault. Then he said it was. He took the blame, but he also said you weren't giving him any room out there. Uh, you know, he uh, he cut down him out of restart, and I lifted. I couldn't lift fast enough for him. Um, I lifted for him to let him in, but I was there. I don't know what more you could do. Uh, you know, Carlo, uh, that's what they say. So I was underneath him. Tried to cut him a break. It was too late, though. He turned down. So I apologized to him, but there's nothing I could do in that situation. And uh, to come back and just intentionally wreck someone, that's uh, that's not cool. I mean, it could have killed somebody in the grandstands. And I know that it's a little ironic that it's got me saying that, but at least I didn't do it intentionally when it happened. So it'll be interesting to see how NASCAR reacts to it. They have the ball. Uh, they're going to allow people to intentionally wreck each other at tracks this fast. We will hurt someone either in the cars or in the grandstands. So. It's not cool to intentionally wreck somebody at 195 mile an hour. Well, Brad knows uh, the deal between him and I. And, um, you know, the, the scary part was that his car went airborne, which was not at all what, uh, what I expected. And, um, you know, the, the, at the end of the day, we come out here to race, and um, people got to have respect for one another. And I have a lot of respect for people's safety. And um, I wish that wouldn't have gone like it did. But I'm glad he's okay. And, um, and we'll just go on and race some more. And, and maybe him and I won't have any more uh, incidents together. That'd be the best thing.